audiobooks, and education. As an English teacher, trying to get students to read a class novel can be a struggle. A familiar refrain from my most reluctant readers has always been, I don't read. For the past four years, I have switched to a literature circle format to encourage my students to pick a novel of their choice. By giving students more choices in terms of what they can read, I've informally noticed a definite increase in the readership. However, while some students still prefer to silently read, other students are choosing another way. With their busy schedules, the smallest percentage of my students are plugging their earbuds into their ears and using an audiobook to help them with reading the novel. Why are students now turning to audiobooks now? Is it simply for convenience? In this mobile age, more and more individuals are reading through audiobooks. In Lou's 2019 article, An Experimental Comparison on Reading Comprehension, Effect of Visual, Audio, and Dual Channels from the journal Proceedings of the Association for Information, Science, and Technology, the researchers referenced the global audiobook trends and statistics of 2018. And what they noticed was that audiobooks perform better than ebooks. Specifically looking at the U.S. market, which has the largest share, the sales in 2016 reached $21 billion for audiobooks and $23.5 billion in 2017. So why are we seeing this emerging trend in audiobooks that has been around since the early 20th century? Well, let's take a small trip back in time and see how we ended up at this point. It all goes back to Thomas Edison when he created the phonograph in 1877. Edison, according to Wikipedia, envisioned that the phonograph would speak to blind people without effort on their part. However, it was not until the 1930s where the audiobook was created to assist the blind readers through government programs. The first test audio recordings occurred in 1932, which included a chapter from Helen Keller's Midstream and Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. The actual first recordings took place in 1934, uh, which were made available on the Talking Book program and included parts of the Bible, the Declaration of Independence, and some Shakespeare's plays. However, it's not until 1955 where the Listening Library is founded, and this is the first way to distribute audiobooks to libraries and schools. However, audiobooks were still cumbersome at that time, and so they were made a little bit more convenient in the 1960s when audiobooks were now on cassettes. In the 1970s, libraries actually began to display audiobooks, and by the 1980s, bookstores actually displayed audiobooks on their bookshelves. Audiobooks were now a player in the print industry. In 2003, Audible deals with Apple, which marks an increase in public awareness of audiobooks, which were now available on iTunes. And by 2009, digital downloads surpassed CDs as the most popular audiobook format. So, why audiobooks? Why are students and adults willing to turn to this format? Well, Hav and Pedersen in their article, The Audiobook Circuit in Digital Publishing, Voicing the Silent Revolution, in the journal New Media and Society, argue that readers are not just readers. They are listeners and users of electronic devices through different sensual outputs and in a number of new contexts. What they're really saying is that audiobooks actually open new doors for many publishers and have slowly become a key part of helping individuals read in their everyday lives. People are constantly multitasking and audio reading is convenient. Irwin, in his 2009 article, Reading Audiobooks, further argues that by listening to texts, we are not only in a better position to comprehend, but also to appreciate and critique. While audiobooks used to be cumbersome, they are now easily accessible, as Irwin noted in 2009. And he also argued that good listening is active and that audiobooks still provide the listener the opportunity to interpret themes and ideas in quite the same way the silent reader is. So while it seems like society is embracing audiobooks, how is this going to impact educators? Well, traditionally, many teachers, more specifically English or language arts teachers, have consistently promoted the idea of reading in a more traditional format. The format is students read silently with their novels. However, Irwin 
argues in his article reading audiobooks was that good listening is active and that audiobooks still provide the listener the opportunity to interpret themes and ideas in quite the same way the silent reader does. So how could this benefit us in the classroom as educators? What is the benefit of having audiobooks in the classroom? With this in mind, we have to ask ourselves, why should we as educators embrace audiobooks? Well, A. Hartel, in her 2018 study, Audiobooks Impact on Students' Reading Experiences, tried to answer this question. Hartel's observations in an elementary school in a lower income area in South Carolina found that a majority of students had positive experiences with the audiobooks and would use it in middle school. Students were able to focus more due to having headphones or earbuds to block out distractions, and they found reading was far more easier. The majority of teachers also noticed an increase in motivation among the audiobook students, especially among struggling students. L. Larson, in her 2015 uh, article, Ebooks and Audiobooks Extending the Digital Reading Experience, noticed that there was a tremendous excitement and growing confidence as the students engaged in digital reading and implemented student centered instructional approaches. She spent a few weeks in Mr. Clark's sixth grade class where they combined ebooks and audiobooks reading experiences using Kindle Fires. The reading and listening experience provided these students with the opportunity to adjust their reading rates and tackle words that were unfamiliar or difficult. Listening also improved their reading stamina, enabling them to read more and for longer periods of time. So what does this mean for us as educators? Larson argues that it's up to educators to provide environments that would allow technology to help enhance the learning experience for students in a collaborative setting. Larson wanted educators to consider technology that could support reading and provide ebooks or audiobooks that were appropriate for their students. She warns that teachers still need to provide the necessary objectives and guidelines for the students and that they still needed to model how to effectively use the ebook or audiobook to their students. Hartel also warns us in her story, study when she observed that teachers often questioned the sustainability of the effect of audiobooks and wondered if students were only interested because it was a novelty. Some of these teachers used the audiobook as a reward rather than embedding it into their practice and showed that teachers did not fully embrace the potential of the audiobook. Hartel felt that further professional development for teachers and incorporating the audiobooks into their teaching practice was necessary and that schools also needed to provide more supports for families at home to encourage younger readers to enjoy reading. What I noticed was that students who were normally not interested in reading were more motivated to finish their novels when they took up an audiobook. Students were able to listen and read at their own pace and participate with the other students in numerous activities. I found far more students finishing their books rather than losing st stamina and failing to finish the novel. Let's be honest, what is more effective? Having students opting out because they cannot keep up with their reading expectations in the classroom or motivated students who are engaged because they are amply supported by listening to their novel. Audiobooks are accessible as multiple students can find numerous audiobook versions for free on YouTube or other internet sites. With the many demands on our students in the classroom, audiobooks have a way of helping relieve the stress or anxiety of trying to read a novel within a short span and focus more for those students on retaining the information from what they hear and apply that information to the various activities and discussions in the class. As Mr. Clark in Larson's study mentioned that the introduction of audiobooks was a win-win situation because as students took ownership of their own learning, developing educational independence should be our goal when it comes to reading, and if audiobooks can, pr can promote that independence, then why hold our students back? Education should, educators should embrace audiobooks because if we have an opportunity to create lifelong learners, then finding ways to help kids read will be beneficial for our society as a whole. Thank you for listening.